Next, from Springfield, we attend a press conference where State Senators Steve Stadelman and Scott Bennett, along with a student of the University of Illinois, discuss the effects on education from the state's lack of funding for MAP grants. This runs about 12 minutes. And we're here to talk about uh, MAP grants. And first of all, I was pleased that we were able to uh, pass Senate Bill 2039 just a few moments ago in the Senate. It provides much needed revenue for municipalities, domestic violence shelters, and energy assistance programs. However, there are still people out there that are being impacted by our, our budget stalemate and our political stalemate down here. You know, second semester has come up for many uh, college students, and without the appropriation of MAP grants, um, it's a very difficult time. As they get ready to start the second semester, they're very uncertain as far as what the financial future is and whether they'll continue to be able to attend college. You know, legislation we passed today includes money for a lot of important things. For example, road salt. Um, road salt is very important, but I also think a student's college education is important as well and should be a priority. Um, I'm joined by, as I mentioned, Tricia Rodriguez, a first-generation college student from Belvedere, which is not far from Rockford, and only able to afford her dream school, the U of I Champaign-Urbana, because of MAP grants. Uh, despite her parents working at a moving company and her working 30 hours a week at a local Kmart uh, through high school so she'd be able to afford college. Uh, she's active in the political science department and in other public service groups on campus, and she calls her MAP grants her ticket to the middle class. So obviously we have you know, a very important issue here that's still not resolved. Uh, we've had some, some ability to compromise on, on pieces of legislation. I, th I certainly think it's time we need to compromise when it comes to MAP grants for the, uh, for the state of Illinois. Uh, the Senate did pass uh, Senate Bill uh, 2043 uh, over the summer. Uh, that is now in the House, so I would certainly just encourage uh, continued action on that Senate bill and an indication from the governor that he's willing to sign it. So, Tricia, if you'd like to uh, talk, uh, feel free. Hi, my name is Trisha Rodriguez. I'm a sophomore studying political science and economics at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. And I'm here today because like many other college students in Illinois, I am unable to afford my education if I do not have MAP grants. Um, I'm a first generation college student and I come from a working class family. My parents work at a moving company, so they're not able to help me with my college expenses. So I've had to work at a local Kmart 30 to 40 hours a week um, throughout high school just to be able to afford to come to my dream school, U of I. And um, so um, my brother's also a first generation college student and um, me and him both have been able to become a part of uh, these really big organizations at our universities. He goes to NIU and I of course go to U of I and I'm able to be a part of the Illinois Student Senate, Illini Democrats, and I'm also able to work with the political science department um, with the faculty to help improve the campus community because of these MAP grants. And I just wanna urge the state legislators to pass legislation to help fund these MAP grants because without them, me and so many other students who impact their campuses all over Illinois will not be able to continue their education. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Scott Bennett, State Senator for the 52nd District representing Champaign and Vermilion Counties. Uh, as Tricia said, uh, or excuse me, as, as Senator Stottleman said, uh, we have taken a major step today in the passage of Senate Bill 2039, uh, which was an agreed compromise between both Republicans and Democrats in both chambers and the governor. Uh, my hope is the next step uh, that we do is address the next looming challenge facing our state, and that is need-based state assistance for Illinois students. Higher education funding is not a partisan issue. Uh, for over 150 years, uh, we have recognized under Democratic and Republican administrations that funding our universities and colleges is the way to invest in our state's next generations. And that investment has paid off again and again as our, institute, as our institutions have become the envy of the nation. Now, times are tough now, certainly, but that is all the more reason to renew our commitment to the future. You do not ride a ship by throwing out its oars or its engine. You make sure that what's working, uh, you allow it to continue working, so you keep moving in the right direction. The solution to many of our state's problems lie in educating some of the best and the brightest in our state and getting them into the workforce. Students like Tricia, who's willing to work at Kmart in the summers, willing to work hard um, throughout the school year, but still not able without the state's assistance uh, to attend her dream school, the University of Illinois. Students like Tricia have worked hard to attend college. 
And if there isn't a compromise in the end, we all lose. We lose because students like her will have to make tough choices on whether or not she's forced to take out a more expensive route to graduate from our state universities or community colleges, either with mountains of debt or even leave the University of Illinois or our state altogether to go to another school elsewhere. As students, uh, it's the end of the semester, and as students are packing their bags to go home for the winter break, they need some commitment. They need security, and they need to know whether they're going to be able to afford to come back in the next semester. Let's work to find a compromise so that these students can have the security and the predictability to keep their focus on where it needs to be, final exams, and not whether or not they can even continue their course of study here in the state of Illinois. Thank you for coming. I think the governor gives a rip about any of this. I mean, you'd think that if he wanted this to happen, it would happen. Well, certainly, uh, the, the uh, State Senate has voted on this issue. And, and unfortunately, when it was voted on uh, over the summer, it became a, a partisan uh, vote. Uh, and that's why it's important, I think, at this time uh, that we go back to, you know, before it's called in the House, I think there needs to be a compromise. Uh, we're just asking to take some of the same lessons that were learned in the, in the bill that was passed today, uh, that we can get some of these things accomplished if we sit down and work these things out. I guess I look at this as an economic development issue. So much of what we're debating down here is about our economy and ways to improve the business climate, right? I think making sure students have access to higher education is an economic development issue. In the Rockford area, for example, we have a huge issue regarding educational attainment. We have a uh, below average number of adults who have college degrees. That makes us less competitive, that makes us less attractive for businesses staying and, and, and attracting new businesses. So if we're denying opportunity for for students and young adults to have access to college education, that is a business issue. That is an economic development issue. So hopefully the governor will see that as well. And I would point out, uh, it's, it's good for both today's economy and tomorrow's. Uh, the state of Illinois, uh, for every dollar we send to Champaign-Urbana to invest in the University of Illinois, the state, the university leverages four more dollars in non-state funding. So that's money coming into today's economy. And then there's students like Tricia. Uh, that certainly, it, once she has her degree and once she uh, has graduated, uh, that's certainly better for tomorrow's economy as there's better jobs out there. That means more taxpayer, more dollars coming into tax rolls as well. Um, so that's good for tomorrow's economy as well. We've been hearing a lot about MAP grant funding, especially from Democrats. Why wasn't it included in the bill that you guys just passed? Well, we, we passed a version just for MAP grants. Uh, it was 20, uh, 2043. So, I felt like we have moved the ball forward regarding MAP grants, and so I think we've done our part. Uh, we could have included it again, but I think that bill, that vehicle for MAP grant funding is there. It's over the House, and hopefully that moves forward. Have you talked to anybody in the House about moving that bill forward then? I have not. Do you know what the problem is over there? Not that to say. Hopefully it moves forward, and again, the governor will be indicated that uh, willingness to sign. A couple of folks have said that uh, you have your dream school. Uh, what can you tell us about growing up in Rockford and looking down at Champaign Urbana and say, someday, someday, I'm going to be in a line? Um, so I come from a really small kind of rural town. So Champaign Urbana is kind of like a huge city to me, even though it's not that way to a lot of my friends who are from the Chicago suburbs. So I think just the fact that it's such a huge school and there's so many opportunities that I don't really get where I'm from to work for all these awesome organizations and be a part of student government is what the appeal was for me. Is there a double major that I understand? Yes. And what do you, what would you like to do after you graduate? Uh, I think I want to break into nonprofit, but I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, so from my understanding, they are, the university has taken money from its reserves and is kind of giving it to us as a loan now. And if um, there isn't a budget passed and they don't, is, and the government does not fund MAP grants, then we will be expected to pay that back in some kind of form of loan or something like that. Did they tell you that in an email or a letter or something? Yeah, and my brother also got, um, a, he goes to NIU and he got a similar email that they would try to fund the MAP grants as much as possible, but in the end we would have to pay them back in some way if we're not able to have them funded. How much exactly is the MAP grant funding out of your education? Um, I'm pretty sure mine is about maybe 5000 for the year, but I can't really say how much anybody else's is, but that's just how much that I get. 
Do you pay interest on these grants, or is it just a money you get and you don't have to repay? Um, right now, if they if they were funded, it's not money that you have to pay back. But of course, if we aren't able to pass legislation to get them funded, then I'll have to pay them back. I'm not sure you have with to pay interest. The university back? Yes, it'll be kind of in the form of a loan, as I understand it. But I'm not sure if we have to pay interest on that or not, or what form that will take. Do you have interest in going to a different school next semester if this is not that? Or um, taking a break from school? I think I would have to take a hard look at what I can really afford once the legislation is either passed or not passed and we decide that we won't be able to fund MAP grants because, um, as I said, my parents aren't able to help me pay loans and stuff like that. So I'd have to take a hard look and think, is this, um, am I going to be able to do this or am I not? And if not, I would have to move to maybe an out-of-state school or something like that. And how many dollars uh, centers are we talking about here and how does that compare with uh, previous year's funding? The, the bill that was yeah, the bill that was passed uh, by the Senate uh, was the same level as in the governor's proposed uh, bill. This was after the governor had vetoed the uh, the budget that was that was passed by the legislature. Uh, so that so 2043 uh, went back to the same level that the governor had suggested uh, in his proposed bill, and that's 364.9 um, million dollars. Do you know offhand how that compares with last, the previous fiscal year? It's actually nine million less than in uh, fiscal year 14. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank Happy you. holidays.